Hi, this is my first experience. Is, uh, I can remember, I already wrote a uh, thing on Word about uh, Nelson was when I was a kid. Now, we took a trip to Sycamus. I remember coming over the Monashi when we were very little, and uh, we were in the back of the car, and it was snowing like crazy. And uh, I think uh, Mom had to get out, or she wanted to get out and walk because she was afraid we were going to go over the uh, cliff. And us kids, Donna and I, were in the back, and it was a horrible snowstorm on Monashi. And I think uh, Mom might have got out and walked by the car. I, I can't remember what happened. That's a vague recollection. recollection. Uh, and we went to Sycamus that time, I guess, to probably visit Grandma and Grandpa, and that's Dad's parents, and uh, the Finlaysons would live there. That's Dad's sister, Vera and Roy. And the three boys, they had a huge house there. Uh, it was a really nice one, too. Uh, anyway, uh, I recall the things, the early things was the uh, Uncle Roy had a gas station there with the old gas pumps that you could, you had to pump the a handle on the side and it filled up this glass container full of gas. And uh, Grandpa had an old workshop in the back of his house and he was always tinkering around in there. I didn't know much about that kind of stuff. My grandparents really, I don't think they ever liked me too much. They liked the Finlayson boys, and they didn't like my mother either. In fact, my, my mother didn't want to be buried near my dad, near the grandparents. So and they used to get me to run the rototiller when I was a kid. It's a huge, great big rototiller. I was way too small, and I ran it into the fence once. Once it started going, you couldn't stop and uh, anyway, uh, and then they got me to paint their basement once too, probably lead paint in this little root cellar, and I painted it, and I painted it. The fumes were so bad that I actually passed out. And so uh, Grandpa had a, a, a little wooden woodpecker on his front door, which was neat, that you pulled the string and the woodpecker would bang on the door that he carved. And I remember he had an old a little toy donkey that uh, had cigarettes in the backpack and when you push, push the head down, a cigarette came out the, out the bum of, the, the, of the, the tail lifted up and out came a cigarette. And uh, I remember they had a collection of National Geographic books in their closet that I used to go and look at sometimes. Of course, they had native girls in them. I was only a little kid. But... Uh, and I remember that there was, uh, I guess there was a flood there in 48, but I don't think we were there in Sycamus. But I remember when the first time we went there to Sycamus on that trip, there was uh, uh, a car bridge that uh, went across the river, uh, across the channel in Sycamus, and it would take one car, and it was on pulleys, and uh, would take you over to the, a little road on the other side of the channel where the uh, old uh, Bellevue Hotel, or it was the Congrave Hotel, I think, originally, the Bellevue Hotel, which was an old, old hotel. It was about three stories high. It's up in uh, Three Valley Gap now. They, they tore it down and restored it up there. I don't think it's quite as big as it was, but uh, we used to sneak in there when we were kids, and uh, uh, we'd go in through the back and had no trespassing, but... There was a big pool table in there, an old-fashioned pool table with the, the felt had been ripped off, and there was like a big bar, a bar with the brass uh, railings and everything and the foot part where you put your foot, foot rest, and there was old lamps, and uh, upstairs in the rooms, the rooms were full of, some of the closets were full of these old clothes and, and bottles and old, old bottles and everything scattered all over. I should have grabbed a lot of it, but anyway... Uh, that was our first trip to Sycamus, I remember. And uh, I don't remember too much else about it except for that ferry going across there. The Sneaking into the hotel was later on in my life. But, um, yeah, I remember Sycamus. Um, and the, uh, my Uncle Monty, who was Dad's brother, he had a little store there, too. At the first time we went there, it was down on Front Street and uh, or River Road or whatever it's called. Um near the fire, where the fire hall is. Uh, and then Uncle Doug, who was uh, 
I guess my Andy Vera's brother, he had a, a the Finlayson store with apartments up above it. There was two apartments upstairs. Later on, Uncle Bert and Andy Dot lived up there, and also the Cyphers. Terry Cipher lived up there. His mom, mom and him and his sister, who were friends of mine. And um, anyway, that was the first trip to Sycamus, I remember. And then uh, we went back to Nelson. And then when we moved to Sycamus, um, we, uh, well, the first time we moved, we went and, and uh, we lived in a place down, uh, gosh, what's the guy's name? McLaren? Anyway, this old house down across from Wiggleworth had a laundry uh, facility down there that they did people's laundry. I can't remember if they had it at first, but we lived in... Uh, gee, I wish I could remember the name of that guy. I'll have to ask Donna. Anyway, um, this was a little... Only a, I think it only had one, maybe two bedrooms. Me and Donna probably slept in one, I think, and Mom and Dad slept in the other. It was a very small house. We rented it. While Dad was building the shop, and he uh, he bought that property, and he built a shop, uh, a big shop with a house attached onto it, which is still there. And across the road from that, he also built that original house that uh, I think it turned it. It's still there, um, where the uh, access road comes down from the road. Dad built that house originally when he was uh, very young, before he. Uh, I don't know if he, if him and Mum lived there. Uh, I don't think so. It was probably, uh, maybe it was. Maybe they they did live there. Anyway, the before the access road went through and the uh, Trans Canada, Dad had a quite big piece of property that had the ball field on it, and uh, um, I used to be able to take the truck out and Dad's truck and roar around and practice driving. But anyway, we lived in that little house down the down the road, and uh, um, I remember once, what happened? I think that old McLaren, or whatever his name was, he he blew up a stump in the back thing, and it landed on the outhouse. <laughs> Another thing my mom told me one time is that her and Auntie Nell and Auntie Mary and the girls, when they lived in Mara, they used to chin themselves in the outhouse and dare each other to go down the hole and try to do chin-ups, and Auntie Nell fell in the outhouse. <laughs> she fell in the big pile underneath. And <clears throat> they had to fish her out and, <clears throat> and then hose her off and clean her up, give her a bath and everything. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> when we were first in Sycamus, I had already been... I started elementary in Nelson, but then... I I can't remember what grade I was in Sycamus, probably four or five, maybe. I guess I, I can't remember for sure. I'll have to think of that. Anyway, uh, I was started school there, and uh, um, I met this old guy named Mr. Wedup, and he was an old-timer from England. I think he wrote books. He was the, uh, kind of a scholar, and... Uh, he had a huge arrowhead collection from the beach in Sycamus, and he used to, uh, uh, I, I got to be friends with him, and he, uh, I think I even had an old uh, piece of quartz that I'd found in in, um, in Nelson that had the crystals on it. Should have kept it, I guess. I think he bought it off me for five bucks. Someone did anyway. Uh, maybe it was in Nelson, but... Anyway, I, I used to be, I like science and things and biology, and he was quite a neat guy, and I used to talk to him, and he, he would take me down on the beach in Sycamus before they went and disturbed the whole thing because it used to be an Indian village there at one time, and uh, the Native Americans lived there. And uh, he showed me how to find arrowheads, and I still have a little collection of ones that I found a spearhead and some arrowheads and scrapers and things like that. Uh, one got lost, but uh, that's another story. And then in the uh, behind the beach in Sikkim was the beach was long there. There was no uh, bridge over, it and you know there was no campgrounds there. And it was a big swamp in the back. Every spring, this big swamp would fill up, and uh, we used to go and make rafts. And we'd had a ball back there. It was like Huckleberry Finn. 
There was all tons of frogs. First, there was all these uh, uh, pollywogs or whatever they call them, um, the, the babies, the, there were little wiggly black things that swimming all over in there, turning into frogs. And then uh, we used to make rafts and go rafting. It was really adventurous. It would get really full back there. And uh, when I first went to Sycamus, there was uh, an old a hobo camp across the... The, the big C, CPR hotel was open when I first went to Sycamus. And it might have been the very first time I went, not the second when we moved there. But I remember the CPR hotel. I remember uh, they had a, like a, a kid selling papers out the front, you know, like paper boy waving the papers when the trains came in. And uh, my mother met my dad there at a dance, apparently. And uh, it was going full tilt when I was a, when I first went to Sycamus. And it was a going concern. That was before they put the Trans-Canada Highway through. And so all the people that traveled across Canada would stop at the Hotel Sycamus. And uh, they had a, I heard they had a, an orchestra in there, like a, a real orchestra. And, uh, you know, it was a fancy place for people from Europe to stay at. And uh, the Queen went through Sycamus twice. Um, and I'm, I I could have met her. I guess I, I stood about uh, three feet away from her when she walked by when I was a little kid. My grandparents met her. Uh, they got up on stage with her the, fir- the first time, I think, in, in the 40s. And then they met her again. I guess the time that they came, I have a picture of them meeting uh, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. I remember them talking about how slow the train, how long it took the train to slow down when they came into town. But Hotel Sycamus was a fantastic hotel. And uh, it was... Uh, a really, uh, you know, one of the 14 or 15 big CPR hotels in Sycamus. I bought the painting of it that this Max uh, uh, Jacquard painted. He paints all CPR. I have the painting of it. It's the first print, and it's a big painting, too. But uh, we used to sneak in there when we were kids, too, after it closed. It was closed for a long time. And we I, I actually had a room number off of one of the rooms, and I lost it somewhere when in my travels, but we used to always go over to the wharf there when we were kids, there was a big wharf, and past that wharf was where the hobo camp was, and there was actual hobos living down there, and these, you know, shacks made of plot, or uh, old driftwood and cardboard and everything, you could see them down there with their campfire going, cooking up beans and everything, Uh, after the war, I guess that's what happened, and we used to swim off the wharf down there, because they had pilings that we could dive off, and I always swam a lot and dove, and then we also, uh, that's where uh, the famous Willy Wump Wump came from, and he, speaking of the swamp, back to that, in Sycamus on the beach, uh, the the big swamp back there, he actually had a little shack back there that he, he would build, and uh, someone said his name was Alex Del Vecchio, and he was a relative of, uh, of uh, no, his name was, uh, his name was Del Vecchio. He was a relative of, of the hockey player, Alex Del Vecchio. Um, I guess his name was Willie, William Del Vecchio. Anyway, we call him Willie Wump Wump. I don't know why, but he was a very quiet, he had never talked to anybody, and he lived back there, and he left everybody alone. He would come into town, he had a bicycle. Uh, eventually he had a bicycle. He would come into town, do his shopping, and he lived over behind the tracks there in where the swamp was, and uh, people left him alone. But there used to be, along the beach in Sycamus, there used to be these holes that were indentations along the where the tree line was that were probably where the Indians had their huts. And, you know, it was all covered in grass by then, but we should have dug down there. That should have been excavated as, an, as a heritage site. Because I pr- you probably would have found pots and all kinds of stuff down there, you know. That it's too bad. And then eventually, what they did with that beach is uh, Carmichael owned it. Uh, the worst thing that ever happened is they went out. The sandbar in Sycamus used to be big. It was like a big sandbar, and the dunes out there were very high. They must have been ten feet high or more. This big dune, and you could slide down it and. And we used to, you know, go out there and swim out there, and the sand was just beautiful. It was all 
washed up from the Eagle River, I guess, and everything. And what the Carmichael did eventually is they brought in a big dredge uh, and they had this big hose that went out to the water and they took that sandbar and they hosed it all into the back and filled in that swamp, uh, which got rid of all the frogs and the mosquitoes and everything else. Uh, there was a lot of mosquitoes in Sycamus. I don't know how Willie Wumpump could have stood living there. But anyway, uh, um, we couldn't sit outside when we were kids there. There was just too many no seams of mosquitoes. And uh, he filled in that big swamp eventually, and they turned it into the resort it is now, which is kind of too bad because they ruined the whole Indian uh, site there. And now you never find an arrowhead there, probably never. Um, there's Indian paintings up Shushwap Lake. In fact, at Swall Bay, uh, I got pictures of the ones. Uh, Marsh had actually discovered them under a rock. They're really neat. And uh, one's about uh, probably a foot and a half high. Of, it looks like a, a fish skeleton or something with these wiggly lines and dots and everything. I have a picture, some pictures of it. I framed one picture. And... Uh, they weren't even listed in the Sycamus uh, Museum or anything as a as a part of the Indian paintings. I know where the first ones are up near Marble Point, and then those ones aren't even listed. And then there's some up past the Narrows too. So um, anyway, I I remember that, and then I remember going up to uh, a boat a couple of times up. I never. I only went to Seymour Arm once, and that was in the last ten years or twelve years. But uh, we went up to the Marble Point. Uncle Doug had a cabin up there. We went up there a couple of times. And, but we never were rich enough to have a boat. Uh, so my parents were very poor. My dad got sick. And so my mom had a hard time going and struggling along. And uh, I was... Uh, I remember going to Marble Point, though. But we used to build canoes. We built a, a canoe, me and Terry Cipher and David Simnet. Um, they were two of my friends and we built a canoe and we used to build all the rafts and raft back in the swamp and everything and uh, a couple of there was a pool hall in Sycamus when I first went there too I remember over on uh, the main street up from where the post office is uh, I can't remember what's there now I think it's the cop shops there Um, but there used to be an old pool hall there I remember going in there and of course, the Gem Cafe was the hangout. That's where, that was down near our house, and uh, we used to all go out there after school and and smoke. We, everybody would go in the bathroom and smoke. I started smoking when I was real young, about experimenting in Nelson when I was about five years old, and uh, puffing off my mum's butts. And Donna yelled at mum because I tried to light one in the bed one night under the covers. And I lit the match, and Donna said, Mom, I think Dick's smoking. And Mom come up, and I said, Oh, no, no, I wasn't smoking. It must have been a spark from the bed springs. What a weak excuse that was. And I lit the field on fire with my friend in Nelson, too, playing with matches. Anyway, we used to smoke leaves and everything in Sycamus, and then we started stealing our mom's butts out of the ashtrays, smoke a little bit, and then put them back, thinking she didn't know. And uh, But the pool hall, it was a kind of a hangout, I guess. But the Gem Cafe was the main one. I actually got a job there when I was about 12. After school, I would I'd make $2 a week. I'd go down there and empty the, the uh, garbage cans out of the washrooms and fill up the pop machine, carry the pop in from the back, fill up the pop machine. And then... Uh, uh, there was two guys that used to live in these little cabins they had behind the Gem Cafe. One guy's name was Fraser. Can't remember the other one. They were kind of alcoholics. I don't know what they did for a living, but they they were kind of neat guys. They're interesting for me. I was kind of interested in people like that. And uh, my mom always said I attracted stray dogs. Uh, anyway, uh, we used to. They used to sit. I'd sit with them in the booth, and they they used to drink vanilla. They would pass it underneath the table to each other, taking swigs out of these bottles of vanilla because it had alcohol in it. But they were interesting guys. And I remember when we were kids, Vi, there was Cook. There was the old man. Uh, he, he owned the cafe. Um, and then there was Vi. And 
and we just called her Cook. Uh, Mr. Foy was his name. And then Cook and Vi. I guess they were sisters and brothers. I don't know for sure. But um, Vi did the uh, counter out the front. Cook did the cooking. And old uh, Mr. Foy, he was the boss. He lived in, in the where the pop was stored in the back. And it used to just stink in there. Oof. I used to have to go in there and get the pop. I didn't never... I don't, can't remember if I looked into his bedroom and I was all filthy dirty, but he was kind of a dirty guy and he used to, I used to see him in the morning with his teeth out sitting on the breadboard in the in the kitchen. But I used to sit and talk to Cook for a long time. She was kind of neat. I'd sit while she was peeling potatoes and talk to her and, and hang around the cafe. And then I remember kids used to burn wooden matches down, spit on the end and throw them up on the ceiling and they'd stick on the ceiling. They were stuck all over. And uh, we used to, uh, when we were starting to smoke more, we used to sneak in the bathroom to smoke. We'd go in there like four or five guys all puffing off these cigarettes with the little teeny window open. And they would come out, all this smoke would come out behind us. They, of course, everybody knew what we were doing. And we figured out a way to Jimmy the jukebox to get the the front door part of it open, you could stick your hand in underneath the the uh, sliding part that where the records came out, and you could there was all these pins underneath. You could run your fingers along these pins, and it would play for hours. I don't know. Vi used to look over there. Why? Why is that jukebox keep playing and playing and playing? You didn't know what songs you were going to play, but it played and played. And uh, that's another memory. And. Uh, Anyway, my my friends were David Simnet. He was a crazy bugger, that guy, an English guy. I think his dad was a teacher. And Terry Cipher and me, we were like a little gang of guys on bikes. We used to go all over and make, we made, uh, we used to make bows and arrows, our own bows and arrows and, you know, get the get the wood and make them all. And, and uh, we had a pellet gun that you pumped up. I remember that. We used to use that. And then me and Terry Cipher made a zip gun once that I read about in a book. We took a block of wood and made a, 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 like took a block of wood and we screwed a pipe handle, a piece of pipe into it for a handle. So the handle went into the block of wood. The, the handle was the pipe. Block of wood was the long piece. And then we got a car aerial and we cut this car aerial. So the, the a bigger part went onto the block of wood on top and we clamped it on and a smaller piece of the car went behind, and then we put, uh, it was like one of those hooks that you hook for a, a door through, or a bent nail or something. We we put it through the small part, and you would put the bullet into the, the 22 bullet into the big part, and then you put elastic bands around to this, to the firing pin, which was the the door latch thing, through the smaller piece of the aerial, and when you pulled it back, the firing pin would hit that back of the bullet, and the bullet would go would explode, and the shell would fly out the back, and the bullet would fly out the front. Cripes! Wonder we didn't kill ourselves. Me and Terry went down to the beach one day, the first time we after we made it, and I think he squatted down and held the gun up above his head, and I put my coat over my head, and then I would I reached up and pulled the firing pin. And then all of a sudden, bam! And the, it shot, and the and the 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 shell flies out the back real fast, dangerous. So we learned how to hold it out at arm's length to our side with the with the the barrel pointing sort of away from us, so that we could pull it so that it wouldn't fly back at our face. But we used that thing a little bit, and we also made a marble gun. You put a marble in it with a four-inch cannon that we get at Halloween and you could shoot these marbles. And another thing we used to do is put, uh, what was it? Uh, we'd take a, a baking soda can and put, uh, what do we do there? We put four inch cannon in it or blow the lid way up high, something like that, I can't remember. We used to you know, do all kinds of things like that. But And then there was uh, the Johnson brothers. The Hicksons were, they sort of were like a, a, a family of uh, brothers. There was uh, Ralph, Lyle, Wayne. Uh, Ralph, Lyle, Wayne, um, Emmett. What was his name Emmett? 
and the, the daughter, I can't remember her name. There's about five kids. The oldest one, they all, the, the old guys, Wayne was my friend, Lyle and uh, Ralph, and uh, I guess Emmett. I can't remember his name was Emmett. They were older guys, and they had cars and everything. They were like neat, really cool guys, right? And uh, Wayne was my friend, and uh, we used to hang out together. Uh, but the Hicksons, they kind of protected me in Sycamore. I, I was not much of a fighter, and, uh, you know, they was it was like having the Hell's Angels on your side because they were big guys with cars and everything. And then uh, they uh, they used to fight with the Fables over in Salmon Arm. That was another bunch of brothers. And uh, two other guys I met were uh, Jimmy Johnson and his brother. They lived down near the Hicksons. And Jimmy Johnson and I were the first guys that he actually... I put, learned guitar in Nelson a little bit, and then Jimmy Johnson um, and I teamed up when we were 12 and and sang, um, um, it's, it's been a blue, blue day, I feel like running away, a Don Gibson song, and one other song, I know the name, and I'll have to think of it later, um, I know what it is off the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of it. We sang these two songs at the talent contest in Sycamus and won first prize, five bucks, which we split. I played guitar and he played guitar and we both sang harmony. And uh, um, and we, uh, I still got the envelope in my old stamp album. I glued it in there. Um, so that was, that was a continuation of my music uh, thing. And... Uh, um, I remember one time when I was a kid in Sycamus, there used to be this guy, I can't remember what his name, Reimer. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we used to throw snowballs at his car when he went by. And uh, he was like a tough guy. And he had a 50 Ford or something like that, a neat car. And I don't know why we we did it, but we used to fool around like that, like the little gang of brats, you know. And one time... He was coming down the road, and I don't know if it was me and another guy, Terry Cipher, probably. He was a but He ended up being a hell's angel in 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 Vancouver. Uh, he was in the catwalkers out of Burnaby for a long time. This is after we we didn't know each other anymore for years. Uh, he became a catwalker in Burnaby for years, and I met him at the garage nightclub when I was in the Northwest Company. He was a bouncer there. That The first time I'd seen him since Sycamus. And then he became a Hell's Angel after that and, and out of Burnaby. And then I heard he ended up in Chase living up there and he, he died of, I don't know what he died of, lung cancer or something. He had cancer. But um, anyway, Terry Cipher and I were probably behind this hedge or a, a fort made of snow. And Reimer came down the road in his car and I stood up with this icy snowball. I made it in, you know, how you can really make it a good icy one. And I threw it at his car, and his damn window was open, and uh, it went and hit him right in the head. Holy crap. He jumped out of that car, and I was terrified. And I went running around, running over, topped over the fence to Grandpa, Grandpa and Grandma's place and ran in and hid in the chicken coop. And I could see his car out the window driving around looking for me and then because he still went to school but he was like way up in high grades and so I avoided that guy like the plague for years and years every time I'd see him in the hallway I'd go be going the other way he probably forgot all 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 about it but yeah anyway um, there was something else came to mind about that but that was that was uh Rhymer, anyway, and uh, let's see now. I wonder if I could pause this for a minute. Um, what else did I want to tell you about? Something about us guys doing stuff like that. I'm going to pause for a minute.